Hi everybody, today's video is going to be an um, kind of a continuation of a series I've done and that's best and worst of a particular product. So as you probably know, I have a ton of makeup and I have a lot of makeup from certain brands. So I decided, um, I've done a few of these before and it's like going through my entire makeup collection of every item I own in a brand. Um, so I've done CoverGirl, Urban Decay, Too Faced, and Smashbox already and I'll go ahead and link that whole playlist down below so you can see any of those that you'd like. And today I decided to do Lorac because I actually have a lot of Lorac products. And the cool thing about Lorac that I found out relatively recently is that the name comes from Carol. And Carol is the like um, owner or founder, founder of the brand. And so Lorac is Carol backwards. I thought that was pretty cool because I never knew where Lorac come from, came from. But anyway, I have quite a few Lorac items. I have a lot of limited edition items, which is pretty much true of my entire makeup collection. I am that person that's more drawn to limited edition things than um, permanent items. I don't know. I just am. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go through these items. I'm also going to link my entire product review playlist down below because every product in here I've reviewed at some point. So hopefully that'll... Um, you know, give you a little bit more information if you'd like. But first I'm going to start, I think, these are pretty much the only two, uh, what do you call them, permanent items, and I have the Lorac Pro 1 and Pro 2. They do have a Pro 3, I don't think they have a Pro 4, I could be wrong. Sorry, I dropped something, you'll know what happens every time. Um, I don't believe they have a Pro 4, like, of this style, but they have the Pro 1 and Pro 2. Now, in general, these, this formula is very, very powdery, and I find that, especially with these two, it just blends into one. So here is the original Pro. And you can see I do have pan on one of these shades, which is exciting. I did, I hit that pan in my Christmas Project Pan playlist. I'm going to go ahead and link my whole Project Pan playlist down below because I've, I've featured a lot of these items in different projects. But here is the shade white. But... This is a, a very hyped up product. This shade Champagne has terrible glitter fallout. But in general, they're very, very pigmented, which is nice. However, I find that they're just too muddy. And I don't really like the Pro formula. Well, I say that. I don't like the Pro 1 or the Pro 2. So here's the Pro 2. I do have also um, an entire empty pan here, but that's because it broke. These shadows are very, very powdery and soft, as I mentioned. And so they're very prone to shattering. I forgot to say before. But the top row is all matte and the bottom row is on sh all shimmer. To the best of my knowledge, this is like the first brand that did that. At least it's the first brand that was very popular that did that. Um, and it's a cool format. The blacks aren't the best. This is the more cool tone of the two. I do enjoy this better. And I've actually done a video of this or that. So comparing these two and telling you which one I prefer. But still, I don't know. I just feel like when I use it, I never get the look I want. It just never turns out exactly right. But... In either way, these are the Lorac Pro 1 and 2. Those are not my favorite. Those are some of the worst products in their line, in my personal opinion. Next, I have the Lorac Mega Pro Volume 2. So they do have four of these. These are their limited edition Christmas palettes. And here, oh, that's upside down. Wait, yeah. Here it is. So this is actually what I used to create my eye look today. So we have two rows of matte, two rows of shimmer. So today I use the shade... Custard as kind of a transition, porcelain and bisque um, as highlights, like um, brow bone, I do under my eyes, I do down the center of my nose, I like a matte highlight for that. Goji is this deeper kind of reddy berry shade, but it just, it's a little patchy and didn't blend out very nicely. Peony is what's on the lid and I feel like it looks a lot more orange and not as much pink. I do have shade uh, pan and the shade gold leaf, I don't have that on my lid today, but again I believe I hit pan in that in my Thanksgiving project pan. But yeah, oh, and then I used chiffon and sugar as my inner corner highlight. I wanted to just go for chiffon, but it wasn't brightening enough, so then I put sugar on as well. Again, I don't know. I feel like when you look at this, you should be inspired, but I'm not. I'm just not inspired by this palette. I don't think it's that exciting. It doesn't make me want to put on my makeup. So again, not the biggest fan of this. Now we're going to go into some things that I do really enjoy. So I'm going to, sorry. I have a lot, and I only have like a little bitty uh, thing to put them on. So this is the Lorac Unzipped Cheek Palette. I actually got this from Ulta when it went on sale. Again, I've done a full review of this. This is a really great cheek palette. In my opinion, it ha it's one of the most diverse cheek palettes that I own because I feel like so many cheek palettes come out, 
and it's like cool you're having four shades but they look pretty much the same on your cheek or at least a couple of them do these four shades are very very different on the cheeks you have this beautiful bright pink this more neutrally like uh pink shade that's my favorite underrated then unapologetic is like a cool bronzy shade really great especially for the summer and then we have unimaginable which is more of a coral but these four are very separate and they look separate on the cheeks i'm a big fan of this palette um i think it's still available if not i'm sorry but if it is it's great and i really recommend it then I have the Lorac California Dreaming Palette. And I did a review of this and it was not good. And I, I pretty much feel the same way still. I am currently panning the shade Seaside in my Easter Project pan. It looks really cool in the pan, but it's really patchy. And it's, um, what do you call it? It like looks black on the eyes. The shade Button doesn't very good. Or excuse me, Boots. I used the shade, uh, which shade did I use to blend out? Oh, Overcast, Terrible and Patchy. The cool shade in this palette is definitely Kitty Cat. It is this like molten lava shade. Like, that is a gorgeous shade. But the rest of them just aren't that great. I really bought it because they have a shade called Starfish. And if you don't know, I'm a marine, biology, a marine biologist. And I study sea stars, starfish. They're the same thing. But I just don't love this palette either. Another one that I'm not a huge fan of. Then the rest of my items are from their two most recent Disney collaborations. If you don't know, I love some Disney. Disney is my favorite. I love everything to do with Disney. And when Disney and makeup collide, I feel like I just have to buy it. So first, I guess I'll go to the two eyeshadow palette. Oh, oh man. I lost a, I lost a lid. Sorry, I gotta grab that because my dogs won't eat it. I have two dogs, if you don't know. Hippo and Kanga. Oh, and that's... I, I, so I've heard a couple people say this, and that's okay. I'm not, like, offended, obviously. But people say my channel is pronounced Becky Loves Kanga. It's Becky Loves Kanga. And Kanga's my dog. Kanga, you want to come in? Come here. Come here. Come on, walk. She's taking a nap. Oh, Hippocampus is coming. This is Hippo. Come here, Kanga. Come here. Hippo is um, my puppy as well. I have two. But I did not have Hippo when I started my channel. Come here. But this is Kanga. This is Hippo. So this is why I Becky loves Kanga. I do love Hippo as well, of course. But I didn't have him when I started my channel. But I feel like they haven't been on my channel in a while. So Hippocampus, he's a mutt. Um, he's a Whippet mix. And Kanga's a long-haired miniature dachshund. She's the love of my life. And yes, yeah, she is. And again, that's why I'm Becky loves Kanga. I'll put her down because it's very hot. And she wants to come out. So, but Kanga is from Winnie the Pooh. Disney, it all correlates, I'm sorry. I just felt like y'all need to see that. But anyway, I have two Disney eyeshadow palettes. The first is my favorite. It's the Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean palette. I've done a full review of this and it's just amazing. I think I've also done a tutorial with it. So I'll link that below as well. As well, uh, yeah. So, here we are. This is a very cool tone palette. It's very unique. I think this assortment of shades is really cool. Every time I use this palette, I love it. This uh, shade, Pirate's Chest, is currently what I have in my transition because it's my weekly product pan, so it's the product I randomly drew. I've also had this shade, Sea Haze, in a project. I didn't hit pan on it, but I had it in a project. This is just a really unique assortment of shades. It's really cool. Excuse me, really cool. I know it's huge, bulky packaging, but, you know, it, it's still really cool. And I, I think bulky packaging is, packaging is good when it has a reason, not when it's just like, hey, it's bulky for no reason, but this, it goes with the theme. And also, um, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but the cheek palette that came with this kit, or not came with, you could purchase separately, but that's in this collection, does fit in this secret little drawer. I don't like, I don't know why, but I'm always nervous I'm gonna get, it's going to get stuck in there, so I don't keep it that way. Plus, I keep my eyeshadow palettes and cheek palettes separate, but either way, um, that's part of the reason for the bulky packaging. But I love this palette. I really do. This one shade, uh, what is that called? Lost at Sea. It's it's a little disappointing. But the rest of them are just great. They're really pretty. And I really love them. And I highly recommend this palette if you can still get it. It is one of my favorite palettes. It's probably like top 10 favorite palettes that I own. And then I also have the Beauty and the Beast Tale as Old as Time palette. If you don't know, this is my current pan that palette. So you can see I do have two pans in it as well already. And I'm hoping to... Uh, Completely finish it up. Not within the year. I didn't set that timeline, but just at some point, I would like to finish it up completely. And yeah, this is another really nice palette. 
it's just a little more neutral and not as unique. This shade, our guest, is always patchy on the lid. But besides that, they're, it's really nice. Um, and then the shade, what is this one, Romance? No, Real You. Real You is also, it's so glittery that it, it doesn't look great. So those two are not the best, but the other 14 are amazing. I really like these. I feel like these two palettes have a different formula. I know that they say that it's the pro formula, but I love these and I don't love the Lorac Pro palettes, the originals. I like the, the formulation. I like the quality of this. I just think it's not as unique. However, like I said, this is my Pan That palette. And I'm really, really, really enjoying panning it. I'm enjoying using it every day. So I like it a lot. Then I have two cheek palettes. Oh, let me just go ahead and throw in this eyeliner. This eyeliner came in the uh, Lorac Pirates of the Caribbean kit. I mean, in the eyeshadow palette. It actually came with it. I have it on today. It's very black. I did set it with an eyeliner and then I did it under, I, excuse me, with an eyeshadow. It's nice. It's a typical black liner. I think it's cool to have it with the kit, but I wouldn't purchase it. Honestly, I've used a lot of black liners, and to me, some of the best are the Rimmel Scandalize, and they're, I believe, $3.99 from the drugstore. So I don't ever see myself purchasing, like, a higher-end eyeliner. Plus, I have a million and eight black eyeliners, but that's cool. I have it. So, as I said, there are two cheap palettes that came in those two, with those two. So, let me rephrase. They were sold separately, but they were in that same collection. So first, we have... The Pirates of the Caribbean one. Hold on, sorry, my uh, iPad's dying. And that is what I have on mainly today. So it comes with a blush, and then this is also a blush, but for my skin tone, especially in the winter, I can use it as a bronzer, and then it's got four highlighters. Now this one highlighter, Bold Spirit, is a little dark. That is what I have on today, but you can kind of see the stride. It's a little dark for my skin tone. The other three work, and in the summer, that one's okay. But for now, we're, it's only March. I haven't been outside that much. It's not the best. But these three are perfect. I love them. I think they have like the perfect amount of sheen and shimmer without being too stark. I do think this palette is definitely more geared towards like medium to light skin tones. I don't think a dark skin tone girl would really get a lot of use out of it. Well, definitely not this Sportune shade or the Caribbean blush or the Lost Soul blush. So like maybe these three you could work with, but these three you can't. And why would you buy a palette for only half of it? But I love this. And um, then there's also the Beauty and the Beast palette. Now, a lot of people love this as well, and I think it's okay. It's kind of the medium ground. It's not my favorite. So today I have on this shade Enchanted, and it looks a lot darker on the cheek. Sorry, I don't feel like my cheeks are very good today. Um, it looks a lot darker on the cheek than it does in the pan. I always want like I always go for this when I want like a beautiful baby pink blush, and it always just turns out coral. And I feel like these last two shades, or first and last, so See Beyond and Rose, look really similar as well. And then this Fortune shade's pretty, but it's a little dark for my skin tone. So I'm kind of glad that, because this, pal this palette came out maybe a month after this one. And so this one is definitely more geared towards darker skin tones. So it's nice, but I have a light skin tone, so it's not necessarily for me. It's not one of my favorites. I know a lot of people love it, and that's great. I don't hate it, but it's just okay. And then we have lip products. So, for Beauty and the Beast, they came out with this set of five lipsticks. And these were sold together. So, I've done a full review of all of them. Today, I have on the shade Believe, I believe. Yeah. Believe. And I also use this as a cream blush. You can do that with lipsticks, which, you know, in case you didn't know. And this was a cool set. So, I didn't like that they had three nudes. That were pretty much the same then they had one like brown and then they had a red so i felt like it was a little bit redundant you could not buy these separately but they are a really nice formula they have a sweet smell i did put this was in my valentine's day project pan you can see i've used up a lot of this one this is the shade um true beauty but they have a nice formula they're really creamy they have okay lasting power for just a, you know a standard bullet lipstick and they smell good they have like a sweet i don't know if it's vanilla maybe like just like a little bit of a sweet scent so i do really like these lipsticks i think they're a good formula i didn't love the shade selection and these are the mod lipsticks in case you didn't know but i just think they're okay like i don't think they're overly special but i do enjoy them and also with the beauty and the beast collection came 
this set of lip glosses. Again, the packaging is great. I think Lorac did a great job with both of these collaborations with their packaging. I honestly do. I don't think you could want much more than what you get. But you have, again, a bunch of nudes in a red. And I understand the red for Belle, like, you know, the red rose. I understand that. And it's called, that's what it's called, red rose. And each of these shades does correspond with a lipstick shade. So, like, this is also red rose for the lipstick. But they're just standard glosses. They're semi-opaque, not very, you know, like a little bit. Uh, they're not overly sticky. They're nice, but they're not great. I did do a lip swatch video of that in case you want to see it. But they're just okay. A lot of people in that review video as well said that they bought these and returned them. So I don't think they're anything super special. But I love the packaging and I love that they're Disney. And last but not least, we have the Pirates of the Caribbean Lip Duos. Now these were sold separately, I, they had six. I bought all six because I can't help it. It's Disney and I just love it. The shade Sparrow, I actually used as a cream contour today and I'm panning this shade also. And then I used the shade Risk It All. I used this uh, lip gloss over that lipstick. So I have those on. These are okay. They have the same lipstick formula as the others. Um, this is like a plastic, it's a little bit cheapy, so I know some people don't like that. I didn't really care. But um, it's the same lipstick formula as the Beauty and the Beast ones, and I like it. Again, it's a nice formula, it's creamy, it feels good on the lips. No really complaint from the lipsticks. And then the lip glosses, these are okay. You know, they just, they're nothing very special. The stopper keeps so much product away. I feel like I almost just want to take all the stoppers out, but then I know how messy that gets, so I don't as well. But the stoppers make it so hard to get any product. Also, the, for the shade Sparrow and Risk It All, they have this really cool like duochrome glittery shades. And as you can see, um, this is on my lips today. It doesn't really come out that way. Then you have this shade um, Ahoy Matey, which is a blue. I don't know why I bought this. I really shouldn't have. I never wear blue lipstick. And this is like a, a very gray tone bloom. So like you wanna look like you are dead, this is the shade. But again, it's Pirates of the Caribbean. Giant Epp's my favorite actor, and I love Pirates. It's got the Trident. Um, well, I remember when I first reviewed it, I was like, I don't know what that is. It's the Trident. I've seen the movie. It's, I think it's a great movie. I know some people didn't love it. I personally thought it was amazing. But I don't, I feel like the lip products are okay. But they're not, none of these are awesome that you need to buy them. So yeah, that is my entire Lorac makeup collection. I do think this is a good brand. You can only buy it at Ulta, in case you didn't know, you can't buy it at Sephora anymore. Um, I like it. I really enjoy the collaborations they do, and yeah, I definitely think I'll purchase more from them in the future. So with that, as always, please leave any questions, requests, suggestions, comments down below. Down below. I always want to see videos you want to see, and like I said, um, if there's one that, if there's like a brand that you'd like me to see, I'm so sorry, I'm so tongue-tied. If there's a brand that you'd like to see me do a best and worst of, go ahead and let me know. I'd love to do that. And yeah, with that, I'll just see you all real soon. Bye.